out again this morning. After a good night's sleep, I hope that we all had it and are feeling relaxed today. I was just thinking as I was standing in the room and Billy Paul put in 25 cents this morning. I remember standing on this same pulpit when uh, Frankie Weber, a neighbor here, he and I went to school together and I was about 21 and or about 22, I believe, and he was already 25. And when he put in the 25 cents, I thought, oh, my, Frankie's about ready to die. He's old. <laughs> and, and now I thought, what will I do when I get that age, 25? And now my son's putting in 25. Just goes to show that time is fleeting and it waits on no one. We must work while it is day, for the time will come when we cannot work no longer. And I always like Longfellow's psalm of life, with partings leave behind us the footprints on the sands of time. We must make footprints while we can make them, each of us. Let's not waste one day, but make every day count the best that we can for his glory. Uh, a couple of nights ago, or two weeks ago it has been, Lord gives visions, as we're all sure of that here. And I had a strange vision that happened to me while I was down in Kentucky. I said to the party I was with, uh, something surely fixing to happen. I saw standing before me about three o'clock in the morning, in the room, a man hideously dark, not like our beloved colored brother and sister. This man was different. His body was wrinkled iron, and he was coming with great clutching hands to get me. And in my protection was a small blade, but it was no good. It couldn't protect myself with it. So somehow the Lord come in and help me to get away from this hideous man. He was wrinkled iron. I could see him as he raised his hands, the great wrinkles in his skin, just like iron moving back and forth. I suppose maybe a hard pressing bullet would not pierce that hideous shell like a, a, some animal, a tortoise or something over him. And he was after me. I have a good idea of what that was and what it means. But then last Tuesday morning, about three o'clock, something else happened. I was at home. And standing before me in a room was a divine one that spoke words that I did not understand. And the time that he appointed is near at hand. And I did not hear him too good, but he was a divine one. And he said, seven more days and you'll stand as Moses stood or will be as Moses was or something concerning Moses. That leaves me one more day after today. That was the sixth. I don't know what that means. I know that he will work it out, whatever it is. You will stand or have to stand or be as, or it was something pertaining to Moses. And I never thought too much about it. I told my family and told some of my loved ones that I saw this divine one, yet he spoke as a man. And then I noticed that my message of last evening, the Lord let me choose Moses. And this morning, it's uh, Moses and his successor. And the scripture that I'm about to approach this morning for is concerning Moses and Joshua. And this scripture, Joshua, the first chapter, has always been a very outstanding scripture. Never preached on it in my life. I'm going to try it this morning. But about two years ago, I saw the Bible in the room come down and stand where I was at, 
and a hand from above came down and parted the pages, turned them out, and come down Joshua 1 to the ninth verse and stopped going slowly. <clears throat> I've waited for this hour to approach. Amen. So when I would feel that it was God's will for me to speak concerning it. Now, don't forget the evening services if you are can come and you don't have a post of duty. If you have churches that need you, uh, we certainly recommend you to your church. This morning we're going to pray for the sick immediately after the message, and I think there following that is a baptismal service. And tonight, the Lord willing, I want to preach on five infallible scriptural identifications of the church and our relationship with it, with the New Testament church and our relationship with this church. And services will begin the song service at 7.30, try to be in the pulpit at 8 o'clock. And we'll be through by 9.30, the Lord willing. And then I trust that today that it will not be and none of these words that when I come down to the commission that no one will fail to see it because it's very important that you lay aside everything now and think as we wait on the Holy Spirit. Before approaching this marvelous and gracious word, I'm going to ask that my good friend, co-worker, uh, Dr. Lee Vale, if he'll stand up and lead us in a word of prayer as we open the word. Brother Vale. Father, Thank you, Brother Vale, for that inspiring prayer to God. And now let us turn in the scriptures. There's just so much to talk about, but yet seeing many standing around the walls and in the halls and so forth. I believe we are facing the dawn of a new day. Now, in the scripture reading this morning, let's turn to the first chapter of Joshua. And we will read from the first book of Joshua, the first chapter the first nine verses. While we're making ready, this message is being taped and will be sent to many parts of the world. I want the people of the world to whom the Lord has given me favor, and I have found grace in your sight, I'm saying this this morning because that in the future, hoping to come into your congregations and meetings, that you might know ahead of time what the Lord God has done, that you might know truth, and as Jesus said, the truth shall make you free. Reading from Joshua 1. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spake unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise and go over this Jordan, thou and all this people, unto the land which I have given to them, even to the children of Israel, every place that the sole of your foot shall tread upon. That have I given unto you, as I said unto Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even unto the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hattites, unto the great sea, towards the going down of the sun, shall be your coast. There shall not any man be able to stand before thee all the days of thy life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. I will not fail thee, nor forsake thee. Be strong and of a good courage. For unto this people shall thou divide for an inheritance the land which I swear unto their fathers to give them. 
Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou mayest observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded thee. Turn not from it to the right hand or to the left, that thou mayest prosper wheresoever thou goest. This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then thou shalt make thy ways prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Have not I commanded thee? Be strong and of a good courage. Be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed. For the Lord thy God is with thee wheresoever thou goest. In the fifth verse, and about the middle of the verse, it is written, As I was with Moses, so I will be with thee. That is what, if I should call it a text, I would like to, to wait on a few moments and call your attention to that. As I was with Moses, so will I be with thee. Now, last evening we were journeying with the children of Israel all the way from Egypt till we got them into Kadesh. Oh, what a great lesson. What a great thing. As we type the natural church to the spiritual church, God dealing with Israel in the natural with the church in these days as he's calling out of the Gentiles a people for his name. He's dealing with them in the spiritual as he dealt with them in the natural. Just parallel one to the other. All that God did with them and all that God did for them and all they did in response falls to us as an example. And we see so far the word has been carried out exactly the same. How that in the natural, when they got their victory or two, they settled down to rejoicing and shouting and dancing and praising God just the way the church did and now has waited 40 years for the opening of something else. And as we think of Moses, this great servant of the Lord, how that at his birth, the place of his birth, God chose him for his work at his birth. And his life was very much difficult to be lived because he's a man and he wants to live it one way and the Spirit of God leads him another way. What foolish decisions seemingly that he would make when with the foot on the throne to be heir of the world and then take the other side to become an outcast or a wanderer. Seemingly, mentally, it would be a foolish thing. But well, we find a great lesson in here that man who follow the Spirit is foolish to the world because they are of another kingdom, led in another way, led by the Spirit. God, let that be me and all you, that we will follow the leading of the Spirit regardless, watching God's promise waiting for it to be fulfilled. That's just what Moses done. Pharaoh read the same scriptures that Moses did. Only Pharaoh looked at it in another way. Moses looked at the same people Pharaoh did. Pharaoh saw them as slaves and as mud daubers. Moses seen them as a called and chosen. That's the way I want to see the church of the living God. Not a bunch of fanatics or outcasts, but as the chosen of God, that I might be able to give my life, as Moses did, for this great church and for the cause. Now, we find Moses being called and after being 
commissioned, he failed his commission by trying to do it in the way that he thought was best. Therefore, it teaches us again that we can't take what we think is best or what man thinks is best. We've got to take the way that God has said is best. Therefore, to follow the word of the Lord is always the best. Take the way God said. And in his failure, we find out that he fled from the face of Pharaoh into the wilderness where he married Jethro's daughter, Zephra. And there, after marrying her, she bore him a son, Gershom. Then he settled down quietly and peacefully as in sheep business. But one day, God heard the cry of his people. God remembered that he had a covenant with those people. Not only that, but he also remembered he had a servant who he had called and had chosen. And he had a covenant with that servant. And God will never change his covenant or change his desires or change anything. God will always keep his promises. Although Moses had failed him and had done that which was wrong, Yet, God kept his covenant. When God calls a man to do something, he must do it. Just got to do it. Someone asked me some time ago, shall we seek our gifts now for our ministries? Some Methodist brethren who had just received the Holy Ghost, I said, no, don't do that. When you do, then God can't use you. I said, the only thing to do is just go ahead being a Christian. If God calls you, he'll place you just exactly where you belong. Usually those who seek and try to get things, if God would give them something, they'd more or less be a stuffed shirt. Usually the man that God calls is the man who's trying to run from him, if anything. Moses and Paul and different ones trying to get away from the call. But we find here that God, in spite of all the failure that Moses had done, he still had his hand on him, and he called him to go do his service, calling him to his commission. And what a consolation that must have been to Joshua. When he heard God say, As I was with Moses, so will I be with you. Although if I'm trying and I fail, God won't leave me. I don't have much confidence in anybody who's too afraid to do anything. I'd rather be found a failure than too lazy to try. One time it was said that the Ballard and Ballard Flower Company hired a man and he was going to sign his name. And the man had no eraser on the end of his pencil. And Mr. Ballard said to him, said, Why haven't you got a razor? He said, I don't make mistakes. He said, Then I can't use you. Because if you make mistakes, you, you don't make mistakes, you won't do nothing. That's true. God don't hold you responsible for your mistakes. He holds you responsible for your will, willful sins. He that sins willfully after he has received the knowledge of the truth. But a man that's going to do something, he's going to blunder, he's going to fall, he's going to make mistakes. But if he's really divinely called in God in his heart, he'll rise again. Amen. Used to be coming to the church here years ago, and they may be here this morning, a little man and his wife. They used to sing a song that thrilled me. Go something like this. Forgive me, Lord, and try me one more time. I'll be yours if you'll be mine. If I fall or if I fail, let me rise and try again. Forgive me, Lord, and try me one more time. I like that. 
Amen. For any good soldier is apt to get wounded or hurt. But if he's still a soldier and got a purpose and something to fight for, he'll rise and try again. Any good soldier of the cross will do the same thing. And to Joshua, the new commander of the army after Moses had passed on, seeing that God stayed with him in his mistakes, he held his commission up. No matter what Moses had done, it was Moses' office that God respected. He was a prophet. He was a, above all the prophets. He was really more than any prophet that had. When his own sister laughed at him for marrying an Ethiopian girl, he called them together and he said, Don't you fear God? <clears throat> said, If there be one among you who is spiritually a prophet, I will speak to him in visions and make myself known to him in dreams. But it's not so with Moses. I'll speak lip to ear with him. Don't you fear God? See, that's not a good thing to tramp upon God's people. You heard him when you do so. God had commissioned Moses. His failures meant nothing. God knowed his heart. And he... One time Moses complained about having too much to do. And so God took his spirit and divided among seventy. They had no more spirit than they had at the beginning. But only I think they just had more machinery. Same amount of spirit. God can put his entire spirit upon a man if he wants to, or he can scatter it amongst thousands if he wants to. One day he put his whole spirit upon a man called Jesus. Now he's scattered it through his churches everywhere. God keeps his commission. Now Joshua, the new warrior, only two left now that ever left the promised land. That was Joshua and Caleb. Now Joshua, the new commander, to lead an army, to step into the place where a great man like Moses stood. It was no little task. I think of a minister today that's called of God to step into the tracks where Jesus stood. Amen. What a command. What a commission. But each is called of God is commissioned to stand in that same place. I'll be with you even in you to the end of the way. Amen. Each minister is called to stand where he did. The works that I do shall you do also. Each minister is ordained of God, is commanded to stand in the tracks of Jesus Christ and perform the duties that Jesus performed. That's quite a command. And how it must have felt when Joshua, standing there that morning talking to God, he said, I will not fail thee. And as I was with Moses, so I'll be with you. No man shall stand before you all the days of your life. I will destroy and devour. I'll make the way clear. Only be strong and very courageous. Be not dismayed that's wearied. Don't be afraid. I'm with you. I'll see you through. What a commission to be given to this new man called Joshua. Now, there's a great lot of types here that we could go into. <clears throat> But we'll bypass some of them. For instance, like Moses was the church age. That brought him to Santiago to the theology of last night. Moses was not permitted to take the children of Israel over into the promised land. Because he had failed. And the church organizations, denominations, have failed. They'll not take the church over. God will raise up a new system, an interdenominational system, by the power of God that will take the church into the promised land. Organizations and denominations have messed it up, each one after their own theology, each one after their own way of thinking. But God will take His Holy Spirit and will raise His Joshua's that will take the church Amen. to the promised with no denominational strings tied anywhere, but will take over his church. Moses had failed. He was a lawgiver. 
Joshua was called of grace, and he took the church on. We find also that Joshua, knowing this commission, knowing that it laid in his hands, God had called him for a duty that he must not fail. He walked softly before God, and when he called the people together and told them that God had commissioned him, what's the request of the people? They said, we'll follow you as we did Moses. If we can see the same thing that followed Moses, follow you. Only be strong and courageous. That ought to be the requirement of ever born-again person today. Amen. If we're requested to follow, then let's see the sign follow a believer. Amen. As Jesus said, the things that I do shall you do also. Now, I've asked you before to be sure to let your spiritual heart be open this morning. Paul, I'm trusting that you'll catch what I'm saying. Setting with denominational people, all kinds of organizations gathered here this morning from Catholic and Protestant and many different types. So it will be revealed to the spirit filled, of course. Now, Joshua had to take this command. The people said, let God be with you as he was Moses. And we will know that the same Spirit that led us this far can take us on. Oh, how the church ought to look this morning to find the Spirit working amongst people. If you want a church home, where the Spirit that raised Christ from the dead, the Holy Spirit that will move amongst the people, that's the Spirit that God's raising up in the last days to take the people over into the other land, into the full promise of all the blessings of God, and to the full commission that he gave all the promise. The promise is unto you and to your children. As Israel sought for that promised land, knowing that it was somewhere because there had been somebody there before, so is the church. We know that there's a land somewhere. Amen. There is a power somewhere. Amen. Hallelujah. Because there's been others over there. Amen. We know that land lays beyond the river where we're headed towards this morning, trying to go into that promised land. Joshua knew that that land was there. He went first and found out that he could come back as a witness. God called ministers ought not to be so stuffed out with theology. But as visit the land to where we're going, bringing back evidence of the divine love and power of Jesus Christ to make known to their congregations that there is a land beyond the river. Now, nice night preaching going up to Jordan. Now when we get to that river, it divides us. It separates us. Once on the other side, something's happened to you. Now, Joshua in all this, knowing that the command was great, but having the assurance, he could be fearless. He could be a we called reckless. As long as he was planted the right way, he might brace up against the hill that would knock him backwards. But he was planted the right way. So can the church of the living God be reckless and fearless in faith if we're planted the right way? For he said, as I was with Moses, I'll be with you, I'll not fail you nor forsake you. He never forsaken Moses. He never failed Moses. He will not fail Joshua. He will not fail us. Amen. He'll be with us. And as we find 
Joshua to take this commission, knowing the responsibilities. Was leading them through lands now that he'd have to go over into the other land. He'd have to set up their kingdom. He'd have to divide the inheritances among them. He knew the commission was tremendous, far more than what Moses had done. Joshua had more to do than Moses had to do. Another thing, he was to lead them along the border amongst their brethren. They had already tasted blood. He had to conquer them. He had to keep them quiet. As they marched on, so is it today with this new Pentecostal group that's rising now. Oh, amen. They've tasted denominationalism. Uh, it's so hard to keep them down. Uh, Some years ago they said, Come, Brother Branham, when the ministry first started, We'll start an organization, build you a memorial somewhere. I'm not looking for a memorial. I'm looking for the coming of the Lord. Praise the Lord. They formed a little cult called the Ladder Rain. Moved up into Canada and out into California. But it fell through. Of course, it can't go. Why was it? They always think they know they come out of those things and they got a little touch of it. They've got to have something they've got to do. Brother, the real church of the living God has no forms, has no creeds. It's led by the power of God. That's in every individual's heart. Hallelujah. Pass by your brethren. Don't fuss at them. We're greater than they. Don't fuss at them. Just go by. I want you to notice a great thing taking place here. There was Esau, Moab, and those that we referred to last night. Many of those people, many of those, were actually borderline believers. They were right on the border. Oh, I've got to stop here on something just a moment. Won't take me but a minute. Many people refer the promised land to the millennium. It is not. The promised land had wars and killings. The millennium won't have any wars or killings. It referred to the Holy Spirit. The battlegrounds. Justification. They left Egypt. There's three stages of their journey. They left Egypt under justification, believing the Word. They separate themselves from the Egyptians and come out. They crossed the Red Sea and killed the things behind them, which was sanctification. Oh, through the blood that kills all human desires of evil. Second stage of the journey. But the third stage was when they crossed Jordan into the promised land where their inheritance laid. Their inheritance never laid in Egypt. So God blessed them in Egypt. You Lutheran to believe in justification. Your houses don't lay there. If you're called, if you're just a Lutheran, that's all for you ever get. You Methodists and Nazarenes and Pilgrim Holiness and Church of God who believe in sanctification, the killing of the evil that's in you, taking out the roots of evil. You belong across the river. But to you men and women, that there's something in you Calling out the deep to the deep. Amen. There's a Jordan yet to cross and a land beyond the river. He said you're going to pass by your brethren. You're going to pass by your brethren. And they're near the borderline. And if you pass by them, don't say nothing to them. I have given Esau this mountain. I have given Moab this country. I don't want you fussing at them. Proselyting. Just move too gently. You know where you're going. Don't take up their habits. Moab had a false prophet, a bishop by the name of Balaam, who come down and got amongst the congregation and tried to get them to organize and 
all come together because they were brothers, but they were not. They were half-brothers, not real brothers. If in your heart, don't disagree with him, just go ahead, leave him alone. Pay him for what you get if you had to pass through his country. He was predestinated to be that. If God would have expected their predestinated Lord to join up with Israel, then he joined up. Amen. If he had predestinated Esau to go with Israel, Esau would have jumped in and went. Amen. But he gave him his inheritance on the other side of the river. So how can you try to make all the Lutherans see it? All the Baptists see it? Uh, all the Presbyterians and Nazarenes and Pilgrim Holiness? Don't condemn them. That's all they know. That's all that's in them. But to you who believe, yeah. oh God, yeah. to you who know, to you that's not something in you that's calling you to be. Yeah. If all the deep you've got's been satisfied, then stay where you are. Yeah. But for me in my house, oh, for me there's something more than what you see. There's a land beyond the river somewhere. There's still a deep calling to the deep. I cannot be satisfied with theology. I cannot be satisfied with a good church. I cannot be satisfied with a good campaign. I cannot be satisfied with a little healing service. There's something beyond that. It's calling. So just let him alone. Go on to don't argue with them, but we're passing to another land. They wasn't ordained to go with you. They won't walk with you. How can two walk unless they be agreed? But to those who love God, to those who go called of God, well, they say, God give us this church. God did this. That's right. God said, I'll give Esau this mountain. Don't touch him. But I've got something different for you. Cross over. Amen. That's my desire, brethren. To see my church cross over Amen. into another land. A desire to move over to the other side. If there is something in you here first calling, there will be something to respond to that call. Just settling down to sheep raising ain't enough for you. Going to some sort of a business is not enough for you. Just to join the church and put your name on the book is not enough for you. Because there's something called. All across the ridge, Jagger. Across the Natch Ridge. And all across Jordan. Until you fall into the arms of God, Yonder. Hallelujah. A deep calling into a deep. Joshua, you know this commission was tremendous. Did you notice that uh, when Joshua started to cross Jordan? How Joshua remembered his commission? Let not this book of the law, my word, depart out of your mouth. Uh, the Lord Joshua, I don't care what the tribe says, what all the clergy says, stay with this word. For then thou shalt make thy ways prosperous. No matter how many big things they do and how many little things they do and how many organizations they made, stay with the word, Joshua. Oh my. Stay with the word. This word this word shall not part out of your mouth. Let me read it again. Only be thou strong and very courageous, that thou may observe to do according to all that all the law which Moses my servant has commanded thee. Turn not from it from the right hand or to the left. If the word says do a certain thing, do it. I don't care what the organization says. Do it anyhow. That's the Joshua that God's waiting for. Turn not one inch, one iota. Stay right with the word. Turn not from it to the right or to the left. That thou mayest prosper. Oh, you think you're prospering when you're building big churches. Getting 10,000 added to your denomination, that's not prosperity. That don't take you one step closer to the promise. What we need is more of God, more of the Holy Ghost. But now I'm going prosper wherever you go. This book of the law 
shall not be departed out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. When you're thinking on doing something, are you taking God's word for it? Are you finding your desire in the word? Are you preaching that which is Bible? Are you, with like many today and too many, preaching for doctrine the commandments of man? This book of the law shall not depart out of thy hand, or thy mouth. Thy mouth. What you're saying, just don't read it and walk away. Speak it! Live it! Teach it! But thou shalt meditate therein day and night, that thou mayest observe to do according to all that is written therein. See what a Joshua this day is going to be? See what a Joshua of the church spiritual is going to be? Is the same kind of a Joshua they had in church natural. Church spiritual has got to be the same thing. If the Bible said, except the man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God, the spiritual Joshua will say, Amen. If the Bible said, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and forever, the spiritual Joshua will say the same thing. He is the same. If the Bible says, the book, the Word, says that tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem till you endure with power from on high. After this the Holy Ghost has come on you, then you'll be witnesses of me. The spiritual Joshua says the same thing. Uh, yeah. Peter on the day of Pentecost said, Repent and be baptized, everyone in the name of Jesus Christ. For the remission of your sins you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. The spiritual Joshua will never outdoy one iota, but he'll make just exactly what Amen. the Word says. Amen. <clears throat> if Mark 16 says, Go into all the world, preach the gospel, he that believeth is baptized shall be saved, he that believeth not shall be damned, and these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils, speak with new tongues, take up serpents, drink deadly things, and not harm them. If they lay their hands on the sick, they shall recover. The spiritual Joshua will say the same thing. Amen. He'll meditate therein day and night to make the way prosperous. I want you to notice what's taking place. Joshua, when he comes to his first campaign, his first time to prove that he was a real Joshua, Israel ought to know that. No doubt the clergy had a different idea. They said, now... We'll just camp here until springtime or until summertime the Jordan will go down. And look like God throws some of the most foolish things in front of the spiritual Joshua. Brought him there in the month of April when the Jordan was three or four times its size. He was trying to see if he really was the Joshua. Let everything go wrong. Let everybody else prosper. Let Alice prosper. Let the man who have a form of godliness and not a power there prosper and shove you back. But if you know where you stand, you'll stand. Yeah. Yeah, Regardless of the whole world turns you down, you'll stand just the same. Yeah. You won't do in that word. The Jordan was three or four times its size. Spooky, horrible looking, muddy. But Joshua he said, God said, within three days we're going over. And we're going over. Now the clergy would say, now just a minute, Joshua, we are educated men. We are smart. Many of us are engineers from Egypt. We know how to do these things. So we'll just wait a little while until the stream clears up and we can walk across it. Isn't that much easier? I don't care what you think. God said three days we're going over, we're going over. We're going over in three days. Watch what Joshua did. What did he put first? The clergy? No, sir. He put the word first. Amen. Said, take that ark. And all you priests, stay away from it. Get behind it. Don't try to lead it. Let it lead you. That's a trouble today. We try to get ahead of the word and bypass and make the word to fit this and the word to fit that. Bless your hearts. What we need today is follow the word. Amen. The word led the way. When it got to the Jordan, she opened up. And it went over his first campaign. He put first things first. Yeah. He had a reason for that. He had a reason because God had commissioned him, stay with the Word. Let the Word do it. Every campaign they went forth in the battle, because God had charged him, they put the ark first. Amen. As the ark went forth, what went forth then? 
same. Yeah. Pairs of instruments before the fight took place. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's what we need today. That's what we had this morning. Singers, instruments, playing music, rejoicing. Then put the word first. Read the word. Then the battle sits in. Amen. We're bound to win. Amen. Just got to win. Stay right with it. Keep its direction. And he'll keep you. Amen. And now are of trouble. Yeah. You had a good reason for Now remember, when he crossed over, before he crossed over, he sent a spy over, two of them, to search out the land. Now Moses had sent a whole group of them over. But they all come back confused. What's the new ministry? He never did that. He knows where you got 1,500 different ideas. you got 1,500 confusions. But he said to, I said, go over there. Spy out the land. Now we're going to get down to something that I don't want you to miss. He said, now when you go over, they passed over to look the land over to see if the promises is right. See if it was what kind of land and how they must go in. They crossed over. The names of the spies isn't given. But when they went into the land, they came to Jericho itself. And when they got to Jericho, what happened? They run into a prostitute. A woman of ill fame. I want to draw a picture. Maybe it isn't right. But I want to make a point by it. We have no history of Rahab. We know that she was a prostitute. Let's think she was raised in a home that was real poor. And she became ill, famed, and she's a beautiful young woman. She went into the streets to make her crippled mother and father a living, no way for her to work, only sell the morals of her body. But I can imagine all the time she knew that was wrong. There was something in her told her that's not right to do that. She knew it wasn't. One day she heard that there was a God that was moving. Her heart was beginning to tremble. She found a messenger from that great move that told her what was going to take place. What did she say? Ah, uh, Joshua had signs. Joshua had the same signs that Moses had. Exactly. So when East, Rahab didn't ask to see Joshua's sign, she just heard a type of the church. A type of the true church that's been pulled away at prostitution. I'm a Methodist today, a Baptist and a lot of Presbyterian the next day, pulled away at prostitution. Yes. But all of a sudden, a little preacher enters the city and says, There's a God that lives, that lived yesterday and the same today. His power is yet the same. He does the same work that he did when he was here on earth. His agents are on the road. Now, Rahab the harlot, known as the harlot, she was a type of the believer today. The real believer. She didn't say, now, I hear that, uh, that Joshua can do signs because he's the successor of Moses. I'd like to see those signs. If I could see those signs, then I'll believe it. Well, he didn't absolutely have to show those signs because she believed it anyhow. She wasn't a Thomas. She believed it. Now, Moses, when he had signs, he went out and performed those signs, but the sign isn't the thing that took him to the promised land. It wasn't. The signs was the vindication of the commission. And Rahab believed it without seeing anything. She said, we're all trembling. No wonder Nicodemus said, Rabbi, we know that our teacher come from God. No man can do these things unless God was with him. We all know it. The world let us obey. Billy Graham calls out, we got to get back to Pentecost. The council of churches calls out, we got to get back to prophets, to speakers of tongues, to interpreters of tongues, to divine healing. Healers in our churches, letting the Spirit of God have its way away. God's making his call. The people fear real godliness. 
and set out everything our hearts are failing within us. Now, she didn't have to see a sign that Joshua could do with his hand or with a stick. She believed. She said, I heard, and I believe. And now I'm asking for mercy. Oh, how we could put a lesson right here. I'm asking for mercy for me and my house. Look at the Roman. That night that pulled his sword and was going to kill himself, the Philippian jailer. Paul said, do yourself no harm, we're all here. So what can I do to be saved? said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, thou and thy house shall be saved. Why? Thou and thy house? Certainly. Thy house shall be saved with thee. Why? If you've got faith enough to have yourself saved, you can have faith enough for your family to be saved. Yes, thou and thy house. Look at Rahab. Rahab said, have mercy upon me. Spare me. I don't want to die with these unbelievers. I don't want to die as an animal. I want to die in the arms of Jehovah. I believe you're God because he's both God of heaven and earth. Amen. He does visible things. He makes things real. I've never seen him do it, but I believe it anyhow. See, she'd never seen Joshua. She just heard of Joshua. She'd never seen God. She'd never seen any of the works of God. She just heard. Others had seen it, and she believed by hearing it. Now, said, I want favor for me and my father, my mother. They're both old and crippled up. I've got some brethren. I want to have faith for them. I'm the spy. The preacher said, yes, he's coming this way, and we're going to take the land. Now, if you want to get them saved, get them in the house. <laughs> if you believe it, go get them and get them in here. Or we'll not be responsible if they're in the streets. But if you'll just get them in the house, we'll be responsible. Yeah. Hallelujah. Well, that little red cord must have hanged down the window. We'll be responsible if you put them in the house. Oh, brethren, if there ever was a time we ought to get our loved ones in the house, it's today. Yeah. The household of faith. Yeah. Get them in. For the time's coming when there's coming a shaking. Only our fathers and mothers and brothers and sisters are only safe in the house. Because God's power is going to shake the country again. Amen. It is. And only the household of faith will be saved. I said, I'm not responsible unless you get them in the house. And she made them swear that they would not destroy her or her family. He said, if you'll get them in, they'll be safe. She let them down out of the place and they went. This great heart of Rahab become a believer. I took her history here not long ago. After she was considered and brought into the faith because of her belief in God, she was brought into Israelite faith, a proselyte. She courted a general in the army of the Israelite army. Watch what God did for that woman. And they, had a, they moved up in Bethlehem. And they had a son. And this son, they called him Boaz. Out of Boaz, he married Ruth. From Ruth and Boaz come Jeff. Out of Jeff come David. Out of David come Jesus. Hallelujah! Why? Faith cometh by hearing. Hearing of the God that's God of heaven and earth. And believing on him. Believing what? The commission that God had given to a man named Joshua. Believing that commission. Joshua had faith in his own commission, as Moses had faith. Things went wrong for Moses. Looked like he failed many times, but he rode to a triathlon and died on the rock. The angels packed him away. God, let me go like that. Let me hold my commission. So someday when I get ready to die, I'll see the rock laying there behind me. Joshua is keeping his commission. Honoring it, God holds it sacredly because he stayed right with the word. Now, Rehab knows that Joshua had this commission. Now, don't miss it. Hold those things in your heart. Joshua had the commission. Rehab recognized it before she seen anything. She knew Joshua had the power of God that was going to take the land. She asked for mercy. 
God granted her mercy. Now when Joshua came into the land, of course we know she was spared. But then another great commission Joshua had was to divide the land with the people. Now remember, this book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth. So he had God's word as I was with Moses, move right on out. As I was with Moses, so I'll be with you. I'll not fail you. You may fail me, but I won't fail you. But if you fail me, my grace is sufficient. I'll bear you right back up. Just keep moving on as long as you stay with my word. I'll take care of you. Amen. Now I had to divide the land. And there were 12 tribes to divide it by. Now what if you had some picks and pets? What if you liked the tribe of Gad better than you did the, cat of the tribe of Ephraim? The tribe of Joseph better than you did Judah? But he didn't do it that way. He divided it according to the word, revealed by the Spirit. He divided according to tribes. And notice he did it by the revelation, by discernment. By the discernment of God's Spirit, he did it. Each one of those Hebrew mothers giving birth to those babies called their names. And each one of their names has a meaning. Jacob, when he was born, being a twin, she called him supplanter, Jacob. But when he got his overcoming power and wrestled with the angel, God changed his name from Jacob to Israel, a prince. The name has something to do with your life. When Peter, a fisherman, had overcome by his faith in Jesus, he said, Your name is Simon, but I'm going to call you Peter, which is a little rock. It changes you. Your name has something to do with it, and your placement in life. I am one of this great thing taking place. When each one of these Hebrew mothers in the travailing, in the childbirth, called out like Reuben, that placed him positionally in the Palestine exactly the way that mother said and called his name. Say, I don't have it all wrote down here, but say Reuben meant sheep herder. Gad means cattle raiser. And Ephraim meant corn raiser. Now, by spiritual discernment, Joshua, the new leader, by spiritual Spiritual discernment placed each one where he belonged. Divided the land just exactly. A very beautiful type today of what we need a Joshua for today. The trouble today when we have come into our promised land, Gad wants to raise sheep like Ephraim. One wants to raise something like the other. Every man wants to be the same. Let God give one man a gift of healing. Every man wants a gift of healing. Ephraim and Gad and all of them wants to mix all of them come as one. But we are divided in our positions. All don't have the gift of wisdom. All don't prophesy. All don't speak with tongues. All are not prophets. But God has set in the church. Some that prophesy. Some that speak with tongues. We want to make them all speak in tongues. See how the confusion is? Then you can't get nowhere. Well, the flesh seems to take them over in a little bit. Sure. But when each man, by a leader, separate them by spiritual discernment and place them into the body, there they remain to become the cream of the earth. God give us a Joshua. God give us back a Joshua that will hold a commission with the Word. That's why God told him, This book of the law shall not depart out of thy mouth, but thou shalt meditate therein day and night. For he had a commission before him. Now, what a great leader Joshua became. Never losing a battle unless something went wrong in the church. When Achan took a wedge, it wasn't Joshua's shape, uh, faith that did it. It was, he took a Babylonian garment and a wedge of gold out of the camp. And when he did, it hindered the whole battle. Yeah. 
One member suffers, all members suffer. What God's coming to one of these days, brother, is a church without spiritual. Coming to a spirit-filled church that's the divinely love of God so well in their hearts together that their walk is one. The battle of all this confusion has got to be won. Is the Methodist right, Baptist right, Presbyterian, Pentecostal, Nazarene, Pilgrim, Holiness, 969 different denominations besides the Buddha and, the, and all the other kinds? Where are we? Something's wrong. Amen. There's a word in the camp somewhere. Amen. Joshua cast lots. Let me say this this morning. Like Elijah on Mount Carmel, if God be God, let him answer his God. If the Baptist denomination be right, let's see them produce the signs of Jesus Christ. Amen. If the Nazarene is right, let's see them produce the signs. Amen. Do the things that he did. Amen. If the Pentecostal be right, let's see them do the things that he did. Amen. Then we'll know. The disciples of, of Joshua said, We will follow you as long as we see God working with you like he did Moses. And the disciples of Jesus Christ ought to say the same thing. We don't work with you and we see the signs of Jesus Christ working with you. We'll do that. That's what we should do. That's what the church should say. That should be the attitude of the ch ch Christian church. Then you could set in order gifts, signs, workers. If one man's a divine healer, that has nothing to do with the one who speaks with tongues. The one who speaks with tongues has nothing to do with the... Gifts of prophecy. See, we have different phases of this ministry. Now, when God gave me my commission, I based all this back for this one purpose. Gifts and callings are without repentance. No man can make himself anything. Amen. God makes you what you are Amen. by His grace. We have no way of making ourselves. Jesus said, Who taking thought can add one cupid to his statue? Who can make yourself bigger or littler by taking thought? You can't do it. When God gave the commission, I questioned it. I said, I'm insufficient or insufficient. I have no education. I cannot do these things. Many of you people here this morning are still living here today. When he appeared down here on the river in that form of a pillar of fire and stood there and spoke back and said, uh, John the Baptist was sent forth for a forerunner of the first coming of Christ. So will your message be the forerunning of the second coming. Look what it's done. That light hanging over there entered the paper. It went all the way across the United States and into other nations. Dr. Lee Vail there was in Canada at the time. He remembers when it appeared in the Canadian paper, I believe it was, wasn't it, Lee Vail? In the Canadian paper, mystic light appears over a local minister's head while baptizing. Many people said it's psychology. But one day, God decided to stop the mouth of the unbelievers because it stayed with the Lord. That same pillar of fire that led the children of Israel is just the same today, leading church spiritually is the same that led it natural. He appeared again, and they took the pictures before the critics and before the examiners. Here it hangs now. Infallible is the truth. Doing the same works. Leading the people spiritually as it led them naturally back there. Staying with the Word. I said, what was the commission? Now remember, God will never depart from His commission. Amen. If I like to draw it for you, or in a way, we'll take it like this year. Here's a little sign. That is the commission. Now here's a little cross in one corner and a Bible in the other corner. But the writing is in between here. That's the commission. I charge you before God and the elect angels in Jesus Christ. The commission was pray for the sick. The question was insufficient to do it. For this cause you were born. This is the means of your peculiar birth and life. That you are to pray for the sick. 
If you get them to believe you and be sincere when you pray, nothing shall stand before your prayer, not even the cancer. How many has read that through the years? It's all over the world. Now, now I said I cannot do it because I'm insufficient to do it. They won't believe me. I'm poor. I have no education. That was me questioning. He said, as Moses was given two signs to vindicate his commission, so are, not you will, you are given two signs. One of them will be by your hand. The other will be, you'll know the very secret of their heart, the thoughts of their mind. And by this they will believe. By these two signs. Now remember, the, listen, don't you fail to get this. The sign is not the commission. The sign only points to the commission. You get out here on the road and see a sign and it says five miles to Jeffersonville. That isn't Jeffersonville. That's a sign to show you you're on the right road. Amen. What if Moses, when he went out there, he had a sign with a stick in with his hand? The sign here is no more the commission it was with Moses. What if all the Israelites, they say, all you Egyptians, all the rest of you Israelites, come over here, we got a man can do a trick with his hand, you ought to see it. We got a man can take a stick and make a snake out of it. Come see it. That was just a signpost. That wasn't a commission. They wasn't waiting for a signpost. God help us. They were waiting for our deliverance. And this poor, sick, crippled up world is waiting for a deliverance and looking at a signpost. Have mercy. The signpost is nothing but a sign to prove the commission. There's the new ministry. It's just been revealed to me. Pray for the sick. Get the people to believe you. God can never leave that. That's His commission. No matter what goes on, how much I fail, I fail miserably. I should have never went ahead with them signs. That was the will of God. But God's blessed it anyhow. But I'm ready to leave this mountain. I want to go across Jordan. I want to carry the commission. Get the people to believe you. I said they won't believe me. There'll be added two signs. Now the trouble is we've been looking at the sign. Oh, Brother Branham, he, you put your hand on him. You'll, you'll see what takes place. Stand before him when the anointing's on him. He'll tell you everything's in your heart. That's true. I walked into the hospital here the other day. There was the doctors. Couldn't find what was wrong with the woman. When the doctors left the room, the lady walked back and she stand on the bed and they said they can't find me but nothing what's wrong. So Brother Branham, you can tell me. I said, if you believe me, I can. She said, I believe. And the Holy Spirit said, such and such a thing. That's what it is exactly. Let's see if that is it. She's a member of Junie Cash's congregation. Another woman there said, my back. She said, they can't find what done it. I said, do you believe me to be his prophet? She said, I do. I said, what happens back down in the early month of June? You, they're, they're trying to work on you and trying to operate for a slip vertebrae. It's not so. It's a pinched nerve. You've got it by lifting the load when you work for McSpadden's Market. She said, I remember when it was down. I remember it now. That doesn't heal her. That only points to the commission. Quit leaning on the signpost. Let's go on to the city. Let's get away from this mountain. Let's get to the city. Let's cross Jordan. I've wronged. I've done wrong. That's why I base these sermons the way I have. Because he said, as I was with Moses, so will I be with you. And when that hand come down and pointed that very same scripture, for a long time I've wondered because I didn't know what the commission was. I've looked for something supernatural beyond that. God cannot get away from His commission. Never. God gives a commission, that's what it must remain. But all the Pentecostal people like signs. They like to see it. The Bible said a wicked and adulterous generation seeks after signs. 
But the commission was pray for the sick. And tens of thousands times thousands that I have failed to pray for because they all desired the sign. They all desired the other day I was trying to work the ministry. Got it into the room. And a man come on the platform and said, Now, Brother Bam, wait a minute. My case is different. I've just got to know something. I said, Well, the doctor could examine me. Oh, I don't want that. I, I want to know right now. My case is so different. I said, Well, I hate to do this, brother. Went on into it, and the first thing you know, the Holy Spirit, he said, Praise the Lord. That's right. I said, The rest of you, come on now, let me pray for you. When I did that, you know what the next one said? My case is just as important as his. Then I got about six or eight and closed the meeting. Like to kill me. I've always wondered, why would that do that to me? It's because I was doing it wrong. That's just a signpost pointing to the commission. It's not the commission. That signpost has been nailed down around the world. And languages. Africa, India, Asia, Europe. Around the world through tens of thousands and millions of people. They know about that signpost. I'm ready to leave this mountain. I want to go on across Jordan. I want to get into something kind of where my faith arise to a spot when I pray for people, they'll be healed. Watch. God puts it right back in the people's lap. You were born to pray for sick people. If you can get them to believe. I said they won't believe. He said, I'll give you two signs about this. They will believe. Notice. Then these signs, they rallied for them the sign post instead of the commission, believing that you were sent to pray. Now when the people comes into the line to be prayed for, as soon as one absolutely hits the spot, there's nothing I can do about it, so they hit that spot, and when they do, then I say, I give you. Emma. Hattie Wright, she, I guess she's here this morning, yeah. sitting right there. She is the first one. When have we seen those squirrels? Did you know the commission uh, about that? And when them seven straight times that God created something, I said that's the same God that could create a ram for Abraham to convince him of his commission is the same God that can create a squirrel because that's what I had need of. A little old Hattie right there sitting in the back of the building with her heart off the things of the world She's bleeding. She said, Brother Branham, that's nothing but the truth. She didn't just say it from here. God spoke out of her heart. Amen. Amen. I said, Hattie, ask what you will. I'll give it to you. She said, what must I ask? I said, you got an old father and mother sitting here. you got a crippled sister. She's still sitting in that chair. You could ask for her. You could ask for your mother and father. You're poor. You don't have any money. Ask what you want to. She said, well, I don't know what to ask. But I just don't know. She said, my greatest desire is the salvation of my two boys. I said, I give you your boys. In the name of Jesus Christ. And they both converted. Loved the Lord Jesus. Both been baptized in His name. And serving God daily with all their heart. Ed Dalton, sitting here somewhere right down here about his children, the same thing. I've seen at least in a campaign eight or nine hundred, maybe a thousand people cross the platform in a meeting, one by one. First thing you know, I go up and pray for them. Sure, they get well. And here come a little girl dying of leukemia. Sure, I know what was wrong with the child. Never said a word to any of them. But when that child got there, I said, honey, I give you the desire of your heart. You got leukemia. And I give you your healing in the name of the Lord Jesus. I turned to the audience and I said, I challenge any of you here. Take that girl to a doctor, have her examined, and see if she's got one spot of leukemia. Why? That child had heard like Rahab the harlot. She believed it with all of her heart. Then God, through His Spirit, moved back and said, that's her. Hundreds have passed over the platform without, as far as I know, receiving anything. I just prayed for them. Right back to the people, if you will believe. The commission was given. That's the original. The signpost has been produced. Now, if you can believe that, 
If you will believe that God sent me into the world to pray for the sick people, I'll be able to pray the prayer of faith for you. That's the only way it can be done. God can never get away from His commission. I failed Him. I've had here about 14 years with nothing but straight discernment around and around the world till tens of thousands of times, million cases, I guess. I asked you one thing. Did it ever fail? No, sir. And if the signpost won't fail, how much more will the commission never fail? Amen. If the sign, that's the minor part, if the sign pointing to the city, if it doesn't fail to tell you the city's there, how much more will the city be there when you come? Oh, amen. There's the commission. Now, my ministry's changing. It's already changed. There will still be the discernment. They will still carry on, just as I feel that God wants me to say them. But until then, I'll pray and lay hands on the sick as He told me to do and carry out my commission. I've waited a long time for this. But I believe now that we're ready to take the promised land. And just as sure as there will be, there'll be some Rahab's waiting. There'll be someone waiting that'll believe it with all their heart. Can you understand? Everybody understands that well. Raise your hand. Amen. How many believe that that's absolutely scriptural? Amen. That's exactly what he said. This is the commission. These were signposts pointing to the commission. Now, I challenge anybody to tell me anywhere in the world to these tapes wherever they may go. Show me one time that he ever failed to tell on the platform or out in any uh, vision or anything, but what was exactly the right thing. Come to pass just as he said. Amen. Told every person just exactly what their troubles was and all about it and where they come and all about what they should do. And every time it said, Thus saith the Lord, to anything of healing had happened that way. Amen. If you know one, let me know about it. I'll go up the tape and find out. It's never failed. In these 12 long years or 14 years, it's never failed because it can't fail. The sign was given by God. It can't fail. And before God gave the sign, He gave the commission. Amen. Amen. Before there could be a sign to part to a commission, before there could be a sign to part to a city, there has to be a city first to part to. Amen. If you believe it with all your heart, you will receive it. The prayer of faith shall save the sick and God shall raise them up. Amen. Now, I've leaned heavy on the signpost myself. Lord, you show me about this before I pray for him, because I don't know what I might do. How cruel that was. I ask the congregation to forgive me. The congregations of the world that's listening in on his tape. Forgive me. I was wrong. I should have never carried it out like that. That was his commission at the first place. That was a sign pointing to the commission. I should have prayed for the sick everywhere. Now, it's right back again into the laps of the people. If you will believe that God commissioned this to be done. Here it is in the Word. It's just exactly with the Word. The commission, and I said, draw here on my finger, an arch, a rainbow. That's a covenant. God made with people. He made a covenant with the human race. He destroyed the world no more with water. He made a covenant with each one of His apostles. He made a covenant with the prophets. I'm yonder some... 15, 14, 15 years ago, 1937, May the 7th, 1937, I think it was, that God made a covenant with me saying, you were born in this world to pray for sick people. If you can get them to believe you, my heart has always been for the people. If you get those people to believe you and then be sincere when you pray, nothing will stand before your prayer. I'll say this with sincerity and with a shame faith. If there's anybody who ought to have faith, it'd be me. To see what he'd done, where he brought me from, the ditch where I was hewed from, to see down through life what he's done. See, when I stand and say something, God will come right around and back it up truth. Years ago when I told you there's an angel come to me in the bush when I was only three years old. A light, whirlwind, whirling in the bush. And told me never to smoke, drink, or anything else. That would be a work to do when I got older. You had a right to doubt that. You had no right, but you could have doubted it. 
Daniel on the river, when he come down and proved himself to be that up where we were standing, many of you sitting here this morning were standing there present. Many of you know that to be the truth. Many of you remember then when the commission was given and he said, go in this ministry, or go into all the world, a revival will start. And there's been a revival since there's never been. The revival is still going on around the world now. Great healing campaigns all over the world. I mean, from a person, a little rat, I don't say there's no dishonor of my mother sitting there, or my dead father that's gone, whose funeral was preached in this pulpit. I was raised in a terrible family. You know, it was none of us Christians. My father drank. God taken a drunkard son and would wash me in his blood. When I'd go downtown to talk to somebody and be talking to some man, he'd only talk to me because there's nobody else to talk to. Somebody would come up, say anybody, no matter who it was, to come up, they'd turn away from me because I was a drunkard son. And many of you people here in my own church know that's the truth. Had a name like a never, like an animal or something. Even one time it was said in the city to a person that come to our house said, would you associate with such trash as that? Oh, but God, what did I have to go on but the blood of Jesus Christ? I have no education. I have no personality. I have nothing. I told my wife not long ago to think of what it was when nobody would talk to me and I love people that wouldn't listen to me. I remember reading a book going to school. I my children to school the other day. I could get them books and things. How thankful I was. I go to school with no shoes on, hair hanging down my neck, no clothes, a little coat on with no shirt under it. Didn't even have a lead pencil or a piece of paper to write on. I had to bum a lead pencil, a penny lead pencil and a piece of paper to write some problems that was on the board or something. Nothing was wrong. I remember reading in a book one day where Abraham Lincoln got off of a, a boat down in, I believe, New Orleans. There he's seen standing in a pasture some little Negro children with their little feet where an old cow had laid all night, got the frost off the ground, and he was there standing there singing, you got shoes, and I got shoes, and all God's children's got shoes. When he got off the boat, he looked standing in the ball pen, and there stood a great big healthy colored man standing there, his little wife with a baby on her arm crying, this auctioned him off to breed him with bigger women to make bigger slaves. Lincoln touched his hands like cats and his fists together. He said, that's wrong! said, someday I'll hit that if it takes my life. It took his life, but he hit it. And he killed it. I said, this drinking, this wrong living is wrong. Someday I'll hit it. How was I going to hit it with the name Mark I had? Nobody talked to me. That's the reason I questioned my commission. Nobody cared for me. There wasn't no one over this amongst my people here. By the grace of God, I have to leave my home. I can't even stay there. For the people around the world calling. Men of all kinds, potentates, monarchs, kings, great people, businessmen, ministers, from all over the world calling, call, 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 day after day, night after night. What did it? The blood of Jesus Christ that my soul. As the blood of Abraham Lincoln took the slave belt off of the current man, the blood of Jesus Christ took sin shackles from me and took me from a name that was Lord, an animal name, and put me a name as a son of His, of his grace. Amen. I'm ready to go to Jordan this morning. I'm ready to stand in my commission. I've loved people. I've catered to them. He's met me vision after vision, which I don't have time to tell, and you know it's right here in the backs of these books. Then you're catering too much to people. To walk with me, you'll walk alone. You're putting too much emphasis on those signs. I didn't know what the rest of it was, but the hours come. Yeah. Hours come when I seen the hand come down to Joshua. He said, I was with Moses, I'll be with you. I believe it this morning. From henceforth and this day on. I serve God in my commission. If He wants to show me signs or wants to show me visions, He can show them to me. If He does not, never will I stand before people trying to let their faith pull something out of me anymore. I pray for the sick and commit them unto God and let them go. If they believe the commission, 
God is just as true. He brought me to this far just as He did Moses, just as He did Joshua, so as He did the same. My humble prayer is, God, forgive me. Let me rise and try again. Help me, Lord. Let me lead this people and set them in the Word so we can go up to Jordan, go into the promised land, where the great ransom church of God will be saved to sin no more. That's my desire this morning. Believe it and live. Believe it and be healed. I speak to you in the name of the Lord. Let us pray. Lord God, Creator of heavens and earth, Author of everlasting life and giver of every good gift, let Thy mercy and grace be upon Thy servant first, Lord. I have done wrong in thy sight by misusing something that's been divine because the people has pulled it from me, Lord. I pray thee, O Lord God, from this hour on, charge me, Lord, with your Spirit. I believe with all my heart, help thou my unbelief. And when men and women are coming to be prayed for, that I'll do as long as you give me breath and life. Let them now believe as they be prayed for, Father. May this commission that Thou hast given me, may I be able to pack it in all the world. And when I get to the certain places where the signpost has been nailed down, may they know that that only points to the commission. May they have faith. Lord, no longer will I wait for a, a, some kind of a sign or something to tell me certain things or whether this person is going to be well. I'll go to meet the enemy with faith in my own heart. I'll go to challenge him against the blood of Jesus Christ. By the blood of Christ he cannot stand. Now if all these things has been right, which has been proven to be right, so will you heal the sick when I pray for them, Lord. It's your word, it's your promise. This I desire to do. Help thou my unbelief. Forgive my sins, Lord, of disobeying you. I did not know what else to do. I, if I did, Lord, it hadn't been revealed and made clear to me. Now it is. I know where I stand. I know my commission. Now I'll never let this word depart from my mouth day or night. I've always stood by it, Lord, stood by it, telling the people that if it's not the word of God, I have doubts of it. But I would preach or do nothing except it be the word of God. But Lord, I'm getting tired tramping around over the same ground. Like I said last night, Forty years in the wilderness, back and forth, back and forth. God blessing, yes, raising sheep and children and whatever more, and flocks and herds and all more. God, you blessed them. But one day you said you've been on this mountain long enough. Oh, go on up north towards Jordan. God, I'm starting this morning. I'm leaving these signposts because it's pointing towards a better land. I may stumble, I may go through the Amalekites, I may go through the Hatites to the Canaanites. I may have to pass through my own criticism, Lord, I just keep moving on. I know there's a land now or somewhere. There's some world or some condition, some place we can get to where you answer prayer. But whatever we ask will be granted, not even cancer will stand before the prayer. I know that to be the truth. That I believe and wait for, Lord. As I commit myself to thee this morning for your service in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Only believe. tape was turned off because this will go across the world. That's from my heart. 
Can you understand, church? God can never say anything and go back on it. His words are infallible. His promises are true. All this time, He's been waiting for this hour. See, it's a prayer of faith that saves the sick, not a sign. If thou canst believe, Jesus said, I can. I can if you believe. Now, God give me power to pray the prayer of faith over you and has promised it and vindicated it as the truth. Now, do you believe? What I ask, I receive if you believe it. If you can get the people to believe and be sincere when you pray, nothing shall stand before your prayer. Brother, sister, if I ever want to be sincere, it's now. Amen. After all my mistakes is showing what I want... The reason I brought these messages previously, that God shows there that He's merciful. Moses made his mistakes, a great man like him. Then when Joshua came up, he's going to make his too. But God said, as I was with Moses, so will I be with you. Now look at God two years ago pointing that scripture right to me. As I was with Moses, so will I be with you. I'll not look at your mistake. He knew that this hour was coming. Now it's here. See, right back again, because God can never get away from it. By faith you are saved. How many know that? Yeah. No many. How many good men prays over you? How many good preachers preaches to you? You've got to have your own personal faith for salvation. Is that right? It's your own. I don't care how many good sermons you hear, how many good churches you belong to. It's your own personal faith that saves you. How loud you cry, how much you beg, how much you scream, how much you dance in the Spirit, you're only saved by your faith. Is that right? That's the only way you're healed. If God gives a man a message, a preacher, a preacher uh, preaches salvation and gives a message, you see that message is the truth. God vindicates it by His Word that's the truth. And how much more are you believe a gift of healing? When it's been vindicated by the Word and by an angel with two signs as part of the infallibility of them both. How much should you believe? See, and as long to show that it wasn't exactly God's perfect will to do that, the sign always weakened me. How many knows that? Ask my wife back there. She can tell you the one she hits the worst than everybody that put up with me. Not knowing hardly where you're at and walking about and this, that, you so not won't go down the road a little piece and stop. Now, coming from these last meetings, I tucked those people in the line. First we'd have a couple nights, three without giving out prayer cards. Then it got such a rally we'd have to give out prayer cards. I would stand sometime and run 50 or 75, maybe have 40 or 50 discernments at one time. And each and every night. Is that right, Gene? Leo, you that's around here that's in the meeting? Sure was the truth. And what did I do? When it left me to start home, I'd forget where I was at. Won't know where I'd come from on the highway. And you mean to tell me God does that to a man? No, sir. It was a man doing it to himself by taking a signpost instead of a commission. I stopped under a little old tree there on the side road somewhere in Washington or somewhere up in there. And I said, Lord, if you just let me shake back to myself good again, help me to know what's true so I can get straight once with the people and get the commission straight. I got it now. Sitting down here on the mountainside of Kentucky the other day, about daylight one morning, he revealed it to me. And this is it. This is it. Now I go in the name of the Lord Jesus. <laughs> believe it and live. Believe it and get well. I can't make no one believe it. You have to believe it yourself. But I have told you the truth. God testified that it was the truth by His Word, by His angel, by signs and wonders for twelve long years. If they're not going to believe it now, they will never believe it. Is that right? But the hour has come when I'm tired staying on this mountain. I want to go up to Jordan. I want to enter into the full promises. I want to get faith within myself, not look into a sign, not look into something God has revealed or some kind of a signpost. I want to look towards Calvary and say, By faith I come, Lord. I'm coming in the name of the Lord Jesus. Now, there's something here to be prayed for this morning. I'm coming to meet the disease and affliction of your body in the name of Jesus Christ. I'll do that until God takes my life away from me. But as long as He gives me sense and understanding, I'll come to pray. Don't you fail to what you believe that when I pray for you, you're going to get well. Settle that. If you don't believe it, then don't come at all. 
Because you only hurt yourself. Now, that's on tape, and it's here from henceforth. No more discernment. Until God gives me the... Tells me to do a certain thing. To go tell this person a certain thing. Then I'll go tell him. He say, do a certain thing. I'll go do it. But as far as standing there saying, now, look on me. You believe with all your heart. Yes, this so-and-so, your John Doe came from so-and-so. You had cancer so long. Dr. So-and-so told you wasn't going to get well. You went and done a certain thing. Now you have to take that back and make this right and get this before you get well. All right, Brother Doe, go ahead now. Believe it. Now, your sister so-and-so, you come from so-and-so, you come from so-and-so, and now I go into a world not knowing what to do, Harley. Well, first thing you know, in years ago, I look and see who I'm looking at in a gal the meeting and where am I at? No more of that. I'm coming in the name of the Lord Jesus as His servant. If God hasn't proved it to you, but this time that I've told you the truth, then you'll never believe I've told you the truth. Amen. That's right. It's true. How many wants to be prayed for? Raise up your hand. All right. Now I want Teddy. Is Teddy still in the building? He had to leave. Who is a pianist here that could play a uh, song only believe for me, if you will? If somebody's here that can play, have you got, or you got a tape to have you somewhere? If anybody's here that wants to play for us, only believe some pianist, come right ahead. Male or female, doesn't matter. We'd be glad to have you. All right. Now, while you play it softly, if you will, sister dear. Now we're not going to give out prayer cards. When we're in little meetings like this, we don't need it. When we're in big meetings, we'll still have to give out prayer cards if we pray for 500. You still have to because you get too many in the swung up into the crowd, you see. How many believe that this is the will of God? Paul, oh, something just makes me feel I've done right. Something made, It's off my chest. It's been on there for 12 years knowing there's been something wrong, Brother Lee. Now I know it's off of there. I said it, it's taped. It's off of my chest now. Remember, you can only be saved by your personal faith. You can only be healed by your personal faith. Do you believe this to be the Bible? Amen. God's Word. Do you believe your pastor be a man of God? Whatever church you go to, if you don't, you should leave it. Get to a man that is a man of God. Then if you believe him, believe he's telling you the truth. Then accept that your own personal faith in Christ saves you. No matter how good your pastor is, how godly, saintly your mother is, how, how real the Word of God is, how much you cry, how much you pray, it's your faith that saves you. By faith are you saved. Now the same thing applies. No matter how God's Word says that He was saying this in the last days, two straight sermons out have brought natural Israel and spiritual Israel together. We're looking for the Joshua of this day, which is the Holy Spirit, to lead us to the land. He has to speak through somebody because He's the Spirit. I've told you what He's told me. Now you believe. Be healed. Now, let these on this side of the line, Doc, go down there. Billy Paul, where's Billy? Uh, come up here to help Doc, if you will. And now... Each one of you coming through this prayer line, remember, it's going to fall right back on you. If you don't believe with all your heart, it's the truth. You must believe it. Now remember, it's you the one that's sick. God said it in His Bible. God sent it by His messenger. God proved it by His angels. Now you must believe it. Now, to you that wants to be prayed for, here's what the Bible said. If they lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. And that's the truth. And we want to believe that with all of our heart now. And God will grant your healing. Now, come around this way. Right through here and right back to this side. Then this other side come right back the same way. Let that side stand up on the right-hand side over here. I say, uh, I'm going to step right down here. Yes, sir, right down here to pray for. Them. Now these letters and handkerchiefs I have prayed over. Many of you, some of you maybe, have to go. 
Don't forget tonight now, the service is on the uh, vindication, the divine uh, vindication of the true church. See? Now, to you that's being going to be prayed for, do you absolutely believe that you're going to be healed? Yes, if you don't, don't come. If you do, it's your duty to come. Now, I am not a healer, but I have a gift of healing. That was witnessed. It's been proved that that's the truth. See, way back a long time ago, I remember you used to go out to the hospital here, and I was just local Baptist preacher here. Locally, I go out to the hospital. There used to be an old nurse out there. She lived down Hard Park. I don't know where she's still there or not. The hospital. She used to say to the patient, "Now you're going to get well. Amen. Now you're going to get well." So a little Baptist preacher is coming to pray for you. See, it was just it was beginning. It was, that was where it was, and now it was going to scatter from local here around the world. And now he gave me these signs to make up for my education. Now, if I had the education of some of these other ministers, for instance, one I know of, maybe a Brother Neville or Dr. Vale, some of those, I, I wouldn't have to have this. But I had to have it to make up this, to take up for what I didn't have in the way of education. I had to have signs. And just as the signs has proved just as effective as an education would have done. But you see, if you haven't got the qualification, God's able to give you the qualification in another way. Now, you have faith and belief. Now, I want each one of you to promise God where you're standing. Because if you don't, it won't help you. I want each one of you to lay aside every shadow of doubt. And when you come through the line, when I pray for you, I want you to walk out of here. You might not see one speck of result. But that, Jesus never said, did you see it? Did you feel it? He said, did you believe it? Did you believe it? If thou believest. Now, I've noticed this along the way. I pray for the people. Some of you wouldn't work that discernment on. They go away and say, hmm. I didn't get anything. You never told me nothing. That person usually didn't get nothing either. But some of them come across the line saying, thank you, Lord. I believe it. They're the ones I heard from. You know, Brother Bram, I never felt any difference for several days, maybe two or three weeks or what more, but all at once I began to feel that thing leaving me. Oh, yeah, see? Right. That's how it went, see? see? See, you might say you believe. There's three classes of people that tend to me. That's unbelievers, make-believers, and believers. Some of them make out like they believe. Oh, yes, I believe, but they don't. If you believe it, I want to ask you this question now. If you believe it, it's an impossibility for you not to be healed. Listen, let me repeat that. It is totally impossible for you not to be healed if you believe it. First, the Word of God gives a commission. You believe that? The Word of God says so first. That's above everything. The second thing, the angel of the Lord has proved it. Amen. The science has vindicated it. Is that right? Amen. Now, not one failure nowhere. Not one failure in the Word of God that said, I, I once give them healing, but now I take it away from them. I want somebody to show me that. I'll show you where Jesus commissioned His church to pray for the sick and the prayer of faith shall save the sick. Now, you tell me where it wouldn't happen anymore. You show me the Bible. He said in the last days he'd do these certain things, rise up these things. Look what's come to pass. He's kept his word. Now, I told you that he commissioned me. Now, the world knows it. Science knows it. The angel of the Lord proves it. And results is proved that it's the truth. Yes, amen. We're living in a sick world. There's lots to be prayed for. I thought surely there's some other way besides. Brother Moore said to me one time, there's a poor little girl crawling up through the building, crippled. Poor little thing, trying to get up to where I was. I looked out, the child started crying. Well, they couldn't bring her to line. She didn't have a prayer card. Not knowing as the child's last night, Brother Morton, I'm helping to get out of line. 
Next day we sat and talked it over. He said, Brother Bram, that hurt me. I said, hurt you? What do you think it's done to me? See? A little crippled girl. That stuck with me and that's been about ten years ago. A little crippled girl over in Illinois. Little blackhead, brown eyes, crawling a little polio trying to get up to where I was at. And the ushers down there had to help her and set her back in her seat. Crawled out of her seat to get up there. Why? You can only take so many and if I'd cut some of them out, put her in there without a prayer card, others would have hurt their feelings. See? Right? Couldn't do it. I said, surely there's some other way. Wish I'd have known then what I know now. Things have been different. Yeah, it sure would have been different. Now, each one of you, the only thing that will keep you from being healed is you not believing it. Uh, now let's bow our heads. Our Heavenly Father, here stands blind, crippled, afflicted, sick, dying with cancer, ulcers, tumors. They're all standing here in the line, Lord. I preach the Word, and for 12 years, you have confirmed that around the world. Now, I've asked forgiveness, and I know that I did not do it willfully. I did it because I thought that I was doing right. Now I come, Lord, come to you humbly, asking you to bless my prayers, that when I pray for these people, every one of them will be healed. Bless their faith. Help our unbelief, Lord. And may every one this morning really catch the vision. May they not lose none of it. But may they see it scripturally. And think of the angel of the Lord back there at the beginning. He said, as Moses was given two gifts. And then two years ago, bringing the Bible with a hand coming down that like wrote on the wall at Babylon. A human hand looked like it pointed down through the Bible to this same chapter. As I was with Moses, so will I be with thee. And Father, here it is this morning brought to the light. We thank Thee for this, Lord. You forgive me for my wrongs. And now as we go into this prayer meeting, may the power of God heal every sick person that comes through the line. I go just as Your servant, not asking for any special anointing, any special anything, but knowing this, that in my life is that commission. I go to carry it out in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, uh, Brother Neville, if you'll stand here. Now, Amen. with this gift, I'm not going to anoint with oil. Amen. I'm just going to do what he told me to do. Amen. As the commission said, get the people to believe you be sincere. Yes. Do you believe Amen. that I'm sincere? Hallelujah. Something has to happen. Yes. Brother Neville's going to lead in songs. You all pray quietly while I pray for the sake. Lord Jesus, I want to give you the whole of these kids and so on, so I may give them all the strength. May she go be the Lord, I lay my hands upon the Lord, this part of the land, and I will give you this power of the devil. In the name of Jesus Christ, Amen. What can I do? All things are. Lord, I lay my hands upon my son. With these bad legs that's swollen up, I rebuke that swelling in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Lord, with heart trouble and other ailments, I lay my hands upon my sister and rebuke this in Jesus' name by my commission. Only believe. Lord, with faith and sight and heart trouble, I rebuke it to this woman. I'm not going to be shaken in love. In Jesus' name. Amen. All things are possible. And I believe it was all my heart. That's true. Give it your time to go. Amen. In some way. That's right. But first, before he tells you, if you'll be sincere and don't doubt it, you'll get well. Exactly right. Lazarus was raised from the dead. He died again, but he was raised from the dead to show his God and his offer to people. He said, Mary, believe us out. This, I am the resurrection life. 
Yes. I'm commissioned of God to raise the dead. Do you believe this? She said, Yeah, Lord. I believe that you are the Son of God that's coming to the world. So where are you buried him? He had to die again. Yes. But he raised him to show that he was the resurrection of life. See? God does those things. And everything's in divine order. Oh, I'm God. so glad to say that. Hey, everything is perfectly in order. Yes. If you can believe everything you ask for is given. Amen. Amen. Thank the Lord. All right. Just continue praying. I want to finish Lord Jesus, our sister is very sick. Hear me standing here preaching these words. May faith for this little sluggishness of doubt just get away from all of them. May they rise up. See this old mountain of walking back and forth. Go on the Jordan, Lord. Grant it, Lord, may our sister travel this path now from this hour on, believing that God heals her body. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank the Lord. Lord Jesus, give to her the desire for her. Yes, her amen. Daughter is her I pray that in Jesus' name she receives it. As I offer my prayer and my faith by laying hands on it. If I didn't believe you, I wouldn't lay my hands on it. If I believe she wasn't going to do it, I wouldn't pray for it. But Thank I believe, you, Jesus. Lord, that she believes too, and we're placing our faith together. Please Jesus please. name. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus name. Amen. Lord, yes, praise the Lord. Getting hard of hearing. Doctor says cataracts coming on the eye. He wants to live with God's glory. Grant it to you, Lord, as I ask for this petition from my brother. Yes, amen. Hear us, Lord, in Jesus' name. Thank you. Don't doubt. Believe right now that you've asked. Amen. Lord, I pray that you will heal him of this affliction of his body. 
Give him the desire of his heart. Let him walk in the path that's ordained for him. Yes, Jesus. May the goodness of God rest upon him. I ask this blessing for my brother in the name of Jesus Christ, God the Son. Amen. As you return, go with it. It's yours. I give it to you. Amen. Go and receive it. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Yes, Jesus. Most everyone knows George, right? How many remembers the story when he was dying just recently? All the doctors passed by him, his body was swollen up like a blood clot to his heart. Several doctors had given him up. I went to pray for him. Brother Funk, he was here a while ago. I believe he was with me down there that time. Set up on the hill down there. That body was going hunting. I want to save this church now. I got to tell some things that's been going on. A lot of times when you think I'm hunting, I'm not hunting. That's an excuse to keep people from following me. Amen. I have to go there to be alone with God. I'm not hunting. I'm hunting, not not that kind of hunting. I sat up on the hill. After him, I was going rabbit hunting. Went right around behind the house to help my hands over towards the house and prayed and prayed. Dying. The Holy Spirit spoke to me one night. One of these men comes from a church that don't believe that healing's right. Yes. A amen. certain minister came to his house not long ago and tried to withstand me there on a debate. Many of you people here was there that night. I see that man almost lost his mind. Now he's trying to find him and get the Holy Ghost. He said, I'm the best friend he's got. Think of that. A man that stood there asking me debate and said, First, I want to tell you yours are dead. I said, I'll forgive you because you don't know what you're talking about. So, man turned around and said, I know you got the spirit of Christ. I said, now the devil, Jesus is going to Christ now, which is it? So now, it's terrible things that's happened. This man lay there dying, and this man laughed at him. He said, now go get your divine healer. And I was up at Lexington, Kentucky, where a woman is healed of cancer. And in the vision, the Lord showed me coming back along that morning about 5 o'clock. He showed me that, said, you shake the hands of Brother George Wright, coming up to the tabernacle and walk up here and shake your hands. And the man that made fun of me, he'll take his grave. I didn't know it. Didn't know he did that drug grave. I called up Sister Wright. She's bound to be here somewhere. Yeah. Call up since right. I said, I have thus saith the Lord. Right. That's the kind of visions I want to see from now. Amen. Yeah, somebody wants something that comes like, I said, yes, Jesus. Brother Thank George you. will dig the grave of the man, or be at the grave of the man that's making fun of him. And he'll come in the tabernacle and I'll shake his hand. The yeah, blood clot left Brother George, and about a month or two after that, I was back. And he always, barely always, come around this way. But that morning he comes this way. I had the audience. I said, look, look, look. Here he comes out here today. Just exactly. Amen. Yeah. The early in the day that's been nine years ago. Nine blood clots nine years ago. By the way, I hear the sister Hickerson. Is Brother Hickerson here today? Yeah. Well, she's back. That's fine. She had blood clots too. I brought you up in the early now he's got rheumatism in his hand. That was his daughter, Sister Hattie, sitting right there, on which I testified. Amen. That the new ministry worked the first time. That's right, Sister Hattie. Amen. One of the boys are in this morning. Are they with you? Where's the boys at? There's both of them standing right back there today. There's the two boys that the mother got to Raise your hands up, boys, so they see who you are. Okay. Amen. Stand back there today. Wonderful, isn't it, Lord? Sure is. Lord, Brother George, you know, Brother I know you believe. I know many times I've laid there in your room at night time, watching out the window, listening to old mockingbird. Someday we got to go over, Brother George. Until that time, God be with us. I know you will, man. Even though I've walked through the valley of the shadow of death, I'll be Yes, you. amen. That vision here not long ago, and I've seen those old people turn back young again. That's where I'll see you someday. Our Heavenly Father, give to our brother the desire to yes, Jesus. heal him of this room. He's getting old, Father. 
And I pray that you'll help him, help Sister Wright, little Edith, and all the family down there. Sister Hattie, her children, yes. all their loved ones, be with them, Father. Yes. Grant this request as I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 79. I bless you, Brother Wright. Give you many more days. Praise the Lord. Brother Don. Ah, God. Here's a brother that's been precious to me. I'll tell you what happened. I haven't got time to go through it. His wife knows that he was dying of heart attack with his sister. And before the Lord had given her a dream, and the interpretation came, and when the heart attack struck him, she stood out the floor and said, I defy this. God had given her a dream that it was going to be that way, and the interpretation come, and the doctor's thinking the man was dying, and here he is alive today. Amen. Lord Jesus, to our precious brother, he drove a long way to come into this morning. His hips back. Just like an automobile, Lord. Yeah, Hearts are beginning to wear and go down. But, oh, Lord, be his strength. Thou art our strength. Undergird yes, this crippled place in his hip. Undergird every weak spot, Lord. And give to our precious brother his healing. As I bless him in the name of Jesus Christ, your son. Amen. God bless you, brother, Lord. So shall it be. Alright, since you're watching Why, Sister Gar? Is this Betty? Why, Betty, bless your heart. Who in this tabernacle don't know Betty Yard? Amen. The first time my old ministry ever worked was on this child. Amen. How many of you know that? Yes, amen. Betty had sent by us today. And she was in such a fix that she didn't act like a human. No doctors could do nothing for And I went to St. Louis. This church made up the money, and I borrowed somebody's overcoat. And they made $11 up for me to go over and pray for this little girl. She was just a little girl, about like, about like this little girl sitting right here. Little baby girl. And I stayed. It's not already here. You see. And prayed and prayed and prayed. I couldn't get nowhere. And finally, setting out of Brother Doherty's car, I saw a vision on what for them to do. And she followed the vision just exactly the way the Lord said to. I believe it was a little bit against her thoughts at that time. But she done it just exactly the way the Lord said to it, and Betty was healed. Yeah, the first time I saw her, how stood Grandpa Doherty wanted to bed, Brother Doherty did it. Let her take a rag and wash the baby's face and hands and so forth. As I went down through the prayer, I followed the Lord to heaven and I will be thy name. And Betty now has been stricken with cataracts. I got to pray for her just a, a short time ago at the back of the building at the Chicago. Betty, honey, let's go over this real close now. I want to hold your hand. Are you blind all the way, Betty? You can just see daylight and dark. How old are you now, Betty? What do you do? She's about seven or eight. Sister Daughter, she had a heart full of You know, Betty, I've always believed that God had something for you to do. And I believe that's why it's been this way we did. And I, I believe that the enemy has did this evil thing. Now, yeah. You know, Betty, says, if I had power to reach in there and take those cataracts and pull them out, I'd do it. I don't have it. But Betty, what I told you the first time, that's the truth as I sat here and you and I as brother and sister in Christ. Brother Darty, your precious daddy, just the sweet of brother as I ever had. Your dear mother, you lived in your house and you shared your food with me and, and everything. You've been like, like a, you son, actually my sister. And I could be no more sincere than I would be the Lord said in that Now, God promises, Betty, I want to get off your father being a minister. You've been raised up in a family that raised for the sick. You've been prayed for many times. It's got to a place where sometimes we just go over it and back and forth, and we, we, don't, we kind of lose the value of it. You see what I mean? 
My, you have made a fine, pretty girl, babe. It's a shame to see your eyes long like that. Ah, uh, man. Is Dee Dee still in the building? My wife wanted to see her. I wanted to see her. What a pretty girl she is. Babe, you was a pretty little girl. You always been a good girl. Now, is there anything down in life that you feel, babe? I just as the doctor would look over your your physical body, I want to look uh, to your soul. Thank you. If you feel God anywhere, Betty, if there is, just acknowledge it that He is. Lord, if you'll let me go over it again. Yes, I Jesus. I'll do this. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Oh, 
that I've accomplished more this morning by the message that I've had and the things that I have known I've, I've followed the commission more than I've accomplished in the last five years because I have found the center of God's will. Now, it may be a hard thing for me to change from one ministry to another, but it isn't changing the ministry. It's taking the same ministry in a higher sphere. Amen. It's the original commission. All these other things have been building up on that. Amen. Now is the time. With all my heart, I'm believing for every person that I pray for. Amen. I believe they're going to be well. And with all the evidence that we have, everything that God has shown, yeah. uh, year after year of infallible proof of the Bible living again, yes. Amen. then how could it fail? Amen. It just can't fail. Now, there's only one way to make it fail. That is for you not to believe it. Amen. If Jesus stood here himself and would pray for you and go through the same act that we have done this morning, no more would happen uh, if you would believe with the measure of faith that no more could happen than what will happen if you believe with the same measure of faith. Amen. Because I only represent him. I'm a sinner saved by grace. Just a man like you are. Just a human being. But God has to have an outlet somewhere. Yes. Yes. And He's proved that by His Word. He's proved it by the ministry. He's proved it by the angel of the Lord. Yes. And here it is. Now it's up to us to believe it. I remember, just like a child, if there's been an affliction, see it no more. If there's been a disease, it's not there no more. Just ignore any symptom. Yes. Anything that's contrary to what's been asked many times, every child that comes to God's got to be tried. We're tried to see if we believe that or not. And you'll have wars and troubles. But remember, we're on our march. God bless you. I love you. And I, by God's help, I hope He lets me serve you as His servant for many, many years to come. Is my prayer. Pray for me. And now remember tonight, the five infallible uh, vindications of the true church of the Amen. living God. Until then, let us stand up to our feet just a moment. Oh, is there a baptismal service? I believe there is. Let's see if we can. Oh, baptismal service. Baptism. The people for baptism. Are you here? Raise up your hand. Anybody for baptism? One, two, three. Yes, I'm very, very sorry, friends. Now, to those who have to go, I will dismiss them. Rest of them stay for baptism. We want you to have the baptismal service just in a moment. Yes. Father God, dismiss those who have to go yes. with your blessings, your benediction, your grace rest upon them, thanking you for all that's yes. been accomplished this morning as we're pulling away from the mountain, starting upward. Yes. Lord, may we walk up to every ladder realm until we reach the, the kingdom of God. Grant it, Lord. Be with us now. Forgive our sins. Those who stay now to be baptized for the remission of their sins. In the name of Jesus Christ. May these things be granted. Get us together again tonight. May thy power and thy blessings be upon us tonight. May there be a great night tonight. May many that's confused be straightened out tonight. Grant it, Father, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. You may be seated now if you wish to while we make ready for the baptism.